Hey everyone, I'm Nico from Licks of the Beast, and in this video, we're gonna analyze and deconstruct that really cool but very tricky main riff to Sea of Madness. Sea of Madness is one of three incredible songs on Somewhere in Time that were written by Adrian Smith, and it is one of my very favorite Iron Maiden songs. I think what makes the riff particularly tricky to figure out is that first of all, it's a very unusual sounding riff. And also the guitar sound is quite saturated and processed with heavy chorus. So the individual notes aren't clearly defined, even if you try isolating the guitars and or slowing it down. The way I used to play this riff was that I would play the changing notes all on the A string with the open low E string droning over the whole thing. Something like this. That was how I learned it from that tab book that had all of the songs from Power Slave and Somewhere in Time on it. Overall, it did get me fairly close to the sound of the riff, but it never really felt quite right to me. So I kept playing around with it, and eventually I came across this fingering here. That felt a lot more like the actual riff, with that circular rolling kind of feel. However, there was still something missing, because the riff kind of sounded a bit different once the whole band came in. Some years later, I was revisiting this riff, and I figured there would certainly be some live footage on YouTube. And fortunately, there were a few videos available. And while you can never really see what Adrian is playing, I did find one video that had a good 20 seconds or so of Dave playing the riff. And that was a real eye-opener. What I noticed was that Dave is playing a slightly different version of the riff. So it's the blending of both parts together that makes that riff sound exactly the way it does. I'm going to start by showing you Adrian and Dave's individual parts real quick, and then we're going to look at their two main differences, how they work together, and of course, how to play both parts. So here's Adrian's part. And Dave's part goes something like this. The differences between these two parts are where the accents are placed and the melody of the riff. So let's start by looking at where the accent goes on both riffs. Adrian's accents fall on the upbeats, on the end of the two and the four. So I'm gonna play along with a straight beat, just playing the accents without the rest of the riff. Now, Dave's accents fall on the downbeats on the one and the three. Again, I'm gonna play just the accents along with a straight beat. Now let's hear how the two work together. So you see how it creates this really cool syncopated groove. That is some really cool arranging. Now let's look at how to actually play both parts. Adrian's part is a descending melody that repeats the previous note before the next lower note. So something like this. And 
And here it is, slowly. Dave plays a very similar descending pattern, but he plays an open E where Adrian repeats the previous note. He also throws in a really cool G power chord on the second repeat, just to keep things interesting. Something like this. slowly. Alright, so now that we have both parts down, let's hear how it all sounds together to make the awesome main riff to Sea of Madness. Seriously, how cool is that? Now I want to cover one final detail that will help you get this riff to sound just right, and that is the picking. You're going to want to use strict alternate picking on this one, making sure to down pick on the down beats and up pick on the up beats. This is a big part of what gives the riff that circular feel I mentioned earlier. If you mess up that pattern, the groove starts to fall apart and the riff is going to start sounding muddy. So it's very important to be very precise with your picking, to have solid timing, and to pay really close attention to the accents. So now let's hear the full riff with both parts together one last time. Well, that's it for this week. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. It really goes a long way in supporting the channel. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon with more Licks of the Beast.